Okay. All right. Hello. Happy Wednesday. How's everybody doing? Post, Merry post Christmas. Yes, I'm still in my Christmas earrings and all that. I was excited I got to have one more day of um, putting on my Christmas garb. I'm like, I think I should be able to still wear it all week long until New Year's comes. Uh, yes, I am one of those Christmas fanatics. Um, I am going to see, I don't know if I can see your comments or not, but it's okay. So I just don't want to be rude um, if I don't see something and I don't respond. So anyway, let me get those little things out of my way on the screen. So I'm Elizabeth Klein and happy to meet you all. I've been on here before, so if you've seen me before, welcome back. If not, um, welcome for the first time. Today's message is about love like Jesus. Um, we've heard a lot of great messages on the gift because it's Christmas time and Jesus is the greatest gift that we've ever received. And um, it seems like every year we do, we get great messages on that to really understand what the gift is. And that is to help bring people to Christ because of the whole reason he was born was to live here, set an example for us, and then die on the cross for us 33 years later so we could be reunited with him in heaven one day. And so I had seen this fun shirt and I got it for Christmas. It says... Dance like Frosty, shine like Rudolph, give like Santa, love like Jesus. And um, when I was just, just spending some quiet time, I'm a super busy mom, and we had actually went to Michigan for 11 days. We were gone, and I didn't get home until two days before Christmas. So I had to get everything ready before I left. I ended up getting sick. It also was my daughter's 14th birthday, and just before that was Thanksgiving, and just busy, busy, busy. But this isn't about me, and so this is what I love about God, and I kind of love the part of my busy season because um, whenever, whenever I'm asked to speak or share my testimony or something like that, I can get really nervous, and I'm an overthinker, so sometimes I can put way more into it than what I probably should or overthink it and have too much time and think, oh, man, I, no, I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it. So I literally, lately... Um, have been really good about probably the last year um, since I've been speaking on here for Unforsaken Women is just letting the Holy Spirit do a, a download and because it's about him it's not about Elizabeth it's not about my gifts or talents or anything or what I have to say so I'm just gonna start with prayer that everything I say glorifies him and comes straight from the Lord and I have this little feeling he's gonna change some things which makes me nervous but I trust him, so I just kept feeling that um, he was going to change. But Father God, um, I love you. I praise you. I thank you for the celebration of your birth, Lord. And um, I just hate when Christmas season is over because I love it for so many reasons. But that's part of the lesson that you've brought, the word that you brought um to me for whoever else is listening, God, for today. So I just ask that your words would come out of my mouth, Lord, and that you would just literally overtake my tongue and my mind and everything, Lord. I just submit and surrender it to you, that it's a vessel for whatever you want to say right here, right now. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Okay, so with that said... Yes, I love Christmas. I get super sad when it's over. I know some of you have already put all your Christmas stuff away. I don't understand how you can do that. Um, <laughs> because I will keep it up as long as I possibly can. And I'm so excited because I get to keep it up a little longer because my women's Bible study, um, we had to reschedule for our group um, because I got sick just before I went to Michigan and another lady was sick too and some people weren't able to make it. So I said, well, let's do it afterwards when everybody's more available. So I want to have it all up. I'm in my husband's office. I apologize. And that isn't even his stuff. He hates it in here because if you know Jimmy, that drives him nuts. That's all my homeschool stuff. Um, yeah, I'm a homeschool mom. So ugh, I'm a big advocate for that. However, I'm just an advocate for doing whatever God tells you to do with your kids. 
Um, and that's what he called me to do. But anyway, this is his office. We do need to revamp it. There's not anything Christmassy in here, but my children are home. So um, I wanted to come in here to have some privacy. But anyway, um, I am excited about that. So there's just something about the season of Thanksgiving and Christmas, right? It just seems you're just like, oh, love is in the air. And it's just great. And people seem to be a little kinder. I mean, there are some Grinches out there. Uh, let's be real. And, um, but for the most part, oh my gosh, yes. And look at this cute cup that I just got at church the other day. Best gift ever. Jesus. Of course, I was like, yeah, I have to have that. Well, anyway, oops, sorry. Um, so, um, <coughs> the spirit of Christmas and non-believers know that there is a spirit of Christmas, right? It's a magical time of year. But those of us who believe and who believe in Jesus Christ and know that Christmas is all about his birthday. It's all, it's not about Santa. It's not about the gifts. It's not about anything else. It's about the fact that Christ was born and it does something to us. It makes us want to spread that joy and spread that cheer. And you just look forward to it all year long. Um, sometimes it's a, not a fun time of year if you've lost a loved one or you're going through a divorce or many different tragedies that can come mm -hmm. and Christmas can just seem like you can't wait to get it over with fast enough and I understand that and I am so sorry if that is one of you that that has been for this Christmas season. Um, I've had some pretty tough Christmases myself but I do believe because I've always been a Christmas fanatic that it's helped me through it a little bit. The joy of the Christmas time, it has helped me. I look forward to the decorations. Like I said, I transform the house other than my husband's office. That'll probably be next year maybe. But anyway, if I could even change the sheets and the bedding in our house, I would. But um, I need another house to store everything in. Anyway, so we have that, and um, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today, because sometimes after Christmas, we want to pack it all up, we want to get it away, we want to get back to our regular life, and sometimes that whole spirit just kind of fizzles, right? People want to give. It's a good time of year for ministries to be asking for money, to be asking for help with whoever it is or whatever it is that their purpose of their ministry is for. You can't go to even um, Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or any of the stores, Publix, anything without them asking you if you want to round up or you want to donate to this or donate to that. They do it more times throughout the year, but that's really the time that it's pressed hard. Everywhere you go, somebody's asking for a little bit more, right? Because they want to fulfill and people are filled with that time of Thanksgiving and then uh, they, they're a little bit more apt to give because the spirit of giving is going on as well so thank you for to everybody who does participate in that and um, saves for it or whatever you do because christmas can be a difficult time and sometimes we just need to give to kids or widows or orphans or whoever um, are going through those struggling times and we can sacrifice some things for ourselves to help benefit someone else what a gift that is right that's loving that's loving like jesus right there that is loving like Jesus when we give to our communities. So, sorry, I went off the beaten path there a little bit. So if we, you know, Google the meaning of Christmas, it even says it's a celebration. It's a Christian festival celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. So this season I've noticed a lot more. Um, this year in particular, everywhere I went, it was hard to find gift cards anywhere. I went that said Merry Christmas. They'd say Happy Hanukkah. They'd say happy holidays, um, but not any that said Merry Christmas. And that's literally, we haven't removed God, but we're removing Christ. And Christ is the link to God. The devil knows that, right? He knows that the Bible says in John 3, 16, that we have to believe in Jesus in order to get to God the Father, to get to heaven. That's the path. So if we can take Christ out, then... We can trick some people. So um, I noticed that and it kind of, it upset me a little bit. It made me sad. Um, I was just more aware, I guess, this year. 
the lights. How many of you love the lights? That is my favorite thing. I am so annoying to my family because usually by Thanksgiving night, it's the first night that we have to start going out and looking at lights. So we have to run around, look at lights every single night. It's so exciting because as the, as the days go by, as the weeks go by, you see more and more and more houses with lights on them and it illuminates the darkness. If you just take a night drive, there's not really a whole lot going on, but it's exciting if you can drive through down 27 and you see all the lights to the side, you can see the city in the distance. Um, when you go up to the top of Target, I've always loved that because you can look over and you can actually see, we used to just sit there and watch the fireworks and Disney from a distance and you can see the wheel and you can see all kinds of things from up there. I love lights. So I have the lights on the inside of my house. I don't have any on the outside this year because we went away and my husband really can't put lights up. So last year we hired somebody and this year because we were going to be gone most of it, we just didn't, which is so hilarious that my house didn't have any lights. But as soon as you walked in the door, it was like, whoa. Um, and it takes me a long time to do what I do in here. But that reminds us that we're the light. Right? We should be captivating like that. We illuminate the darkness with God's love, with his light. And there's some lights that are kind of dim and some that are kind of shiny and different colors that are our favorites. Same thing for us as human beings. Sometimes our lights aren't shining so bright, right? We need to get a little LED bulb in there or one of our bulbs kind of fizzle out and it affects the whole strand. But the lights remind us, reminds me, that Jesus is the light of the world. Therefore, we're supposed to be the light of the world. And it just kind of uh, gets me sparkled up in there. Um, gifting. They brought gifts to Jesus when he was born. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Those are very expensive gifts. Gold, you know, for um, his provision. Um, myrrh is like a preservative. It even helped him right through to his death, I believe. They put myrrh on him um, in his tomb. And um, frankincense is very healing. So they brought him gifts, right? And so we exchange gifts. I know that's kind of a pagan thing, and some people don't like to exchange gifts because they, they're like, oh, that's a, that's a pagan ritual, and I, I understand. I love to exchange gifts because I feel that I'm gifting just like they gifted for Jesus, right? Just to show love and it's just fun. I like to do it. Not the stress of it all though. Don't like any of that. So if it involves stress or anything, I'm out. <laughs> um, so we also give to Jesus. So we might buy for our kids and our spouse and our family members, and it's so fun, and definitely to organizations that need help. Or if you don't have money, you might volunteer your time, your prayer. Um, there's lots of different things that, that you can do. Uh, it's There's been lots of times in my life that I haven't had money. I actually had to go to Toys for Tats when my kids were younger, and so I love things like that because I've been there and I've done that. I've experienced what it's like to be on that end of the program. And it is very um, humbling and you are just so appreciative and thankful for all this. I mean, they got a lot. There was a lot of people who gave. So throughout the year, um, when the kids, kids were little, I worked at a place called Family Christian Bookstore. If you remember before they shut down, I worked there and I loved that job. It was so fun. And um, somebody came in looking for the sparkle box. And I was like, what is that? So the girls were really little and I found this book called The Sparkle Box. And it gives a story of about this little boy and he's with his mom. And they go around town and they do different things. They have a Christmas party. They collect, you know, gloves and hats and stuff for um, some homeless people or just different situations. And it comes with an actual sparkle box it sparkles it's kind of hard to see how much it's sparkling but it really does sparkle so every year throughout the year i need to keep strips of paper in here and then on christmas day when we sing happy birthday to jesus and when they were really little i had a little 
cake and everything and lit the candle and blew it out. And if you've never heard that song on YouTube, Happy Birthday Jesus with the little kids singing, it will bring you to your knees and you will cry your eyes out. My girls went to school for kindergarten and first grade. And they went over here to Family Christian Center School. And my daughter's kindergarten class, um, and I think the first grade class, I think they all sang together. They sang that song and I was like, I had never heard it before, so we sang it for my parents on Christmas Day, and my dad just lost it. Well, anyway, um, so that's kind of been a tradition, but we put slips of paper in there. If we may have prayed for somebody, if we took somebody a meal that needed a meal, if we donated money, we donated whatever, our time, um, just anything that we know that we were the hands and feet of Jesus, and it's a gift for him, we put it in here. And on his birthday, we take it out and we tell him what his gift was. He already knew, but that was just a great way to demonstrate for the girls from the time they were little to learn that Christmas isn't about us. It's not about receiving. It's about giving. And uh, they're really good with that. I'm so thankful. So if you don't have one of these, you should get one. It stays on our little shelf now just as a great reminder Um and we talk about it. We just discuss it for a few minutes after my husband reads the Christmas story of um, what we did for Jesus, his gift on his birthday. And um, so that's just a beautiful thing. We have so many um, organizations and charities like we talked about. That's just what happens. So what happens after Christmas? You know, some of us lose that spirit of giving. You know, God's kids, we're not really supposed to lose that, right? But sometimes Christmas makes us a little tight, and then we have lots of saving to do after that, right? we got to make up for that, and um, or just life happens. and um, But we need to remember to have that spirit of giving, that Christmas spirit that we get all year long, because we always want to love like Jesus. Because it's not a seasonal thing. It's an all-the-time thing. So, just because you don't have any money doesn't mean that you can have the spirit of giving. Like I said, it might just be giving somebody a ride to work that doesn't have a car. Or um, something like that. Picking up somebody's kid from school. Helping out a single mom. Or um, my friend's husband works out of state a lot. So, sometimes, you know, I try to be mindful and send messages and ask if I need to pick their daughter up or do anything like that. I mean, we're best friends, so it's a little different, but I try, you know, to remember to do that. It means a lot because sometimes it's hard for people to ask, right? The point is that um, our giving isn't always money, and we can think that it is, and we want to get away from that because it's just like, what would Jesus do, Right? Most of the stories that we hear that Jesus did in the Bible was he prayed with people, he listened to them, he called out their sin and brought them to Christ. That's the greatest gift we can give to God. Look at the salvations, right? Look at the salvations, Lord. Look at how we're advancing the kingdom of God. It's huge. So how... How can we do this? How can we stay in that spirit, you know, if it's so easy to get and slip out of it? Well, remaining in him. So that's what we're going to read today. We're going to read John 15, 1 through 17. And I do encourage you to read the rest on your own, um, including chapter 16 and 17. They're really good. We'll go over some stuff from that. But I'm so excited because I don't have to put my readers on now because my husband bought me not a large print, but a giant print Bible <laughs> for Christmas. So I still have my other Bible that he bought me years ago. That's a life application study Bible. So I love the footnotes to help me along and understand the scriptures sometimes. And now I have this one to just read. So I'm so excited. So anyway, this says, I am the vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. 
No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. That's the main one there, 15 verse 4. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in you, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. He's already asking us. He's already telling us what he wants. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the father, father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is what he said to the disciples, which is basically the same thing he's telling us that he told them first, and we are his disciples. He's telling us to, to love each other, right? That's a lot right there. There it does go on a little bit and talks about and when the world the world hates disciples, right? So we we learn about the adversity of it all, but that's the command, that's the greatest command is to love one another as I have loved you. And um, loving people can be really difficult, can it? It can be really difficult. And um, man, I sure get in some situations where I think, ugh, really? You know, but we have to, and that's what the Lord has been showing me, um, is the word said, that he doesn't call us his servants, right? Sometimes we do focus on being a servant for Jesus because we're serving him because he served us and, and, and that is true, but we're his friends. We are his friends. So if you can get that in your mind and just really soak that in because that's a lot more intimate than the word servant. That's a lot more close. That's bringing you from the outer circle to the inner circle, to that Place. You know, a lot of us have have a boundary, you know, we have a boundary and we only let certain people in certain areas and that is healthy to do and it's okay um, as long as it's because of differences and, you know, Holy Spirit led and things like that. As long as it's not based on fear, um, you know, because we have, obviously we have to work on that. I've had to work on that. I have some boundary issues because of fears and things and trust and all that, but um Jesus is my friend. I'm his friend. I mean, that's bigger deal than saying Jesus is my friend. Of course he is. He's perfect. He's loving. He's, he's Jesus. But for him to call me his friend, wow. And to have friends, we got to be a friend, right? So you got to be a good friend. And we got to do what he's asking us to do, and that's to love each other. And loving can be a really hard thing. So... But it's so beautiful. Those that were in red, those are his words, right? So the key is to remember we're branches. Some of us just want to be the vine. Some of us think we're the vines, and some of us, quite honestly, even think we're the gardener. <laughs> okay? I'm going to water it. I'm going to grow it. I'm going to be it. I'm going to extend it. I'm going to prune it. I'm going to do it all. And then what happens? It all falls apart because that's impossible. We can't. Um, he is the vine and we are the branches. When I was a little girl in um, Sunday school class, we used to sing this song. He is the vine and we are the branches. His shadow over me is love. 
He is the vine and we are the branches. The shadow over me is love. So it's just, I tried even looking it up on YouTube. You can't even find it. It's the sweetest little thing. And I love that when we teach the little ones those songs that you sing with them or you have the books like that Sparkle Book, it gets it in there, it gets it in there, it gets it in there. So then when they're older and we read it, we can say, oh, yep, he's the vine, I am the branches. Wow, that came straight from the Word of God as you're reading the, the Bible. And it's true, right? So I don't know about you, but I certainly do not want to be one of those branches that's withered up, dried up, and tossed into the fire. <laughs> I I don't want to be useless. It gets tossed into the fire because they're useless, right? We go out and we pull all the dead stuff and we get rid of it. And then we continue to um, water and prune back and cut back, you know, the, the branches that are still bearing fruit, you know, producing flowers, whatever it is in our gardens. That's what God wants to do with us. So we remain by reading the word daily Okay, and I know we hear this all the time, read the word, read the word, read the word, but isn't it just so us humans that we need this constant <laughs> reminder? So we do need the reminder. So it can be a challenge. I know it's coming up on January and we want to set goals for ourselves. Um, some of us don't like saying that they're New Year's resolutions. They want to say they're New Year's goals or whatever. Whatever you're doing, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what time of year it is. It could be June 1st and you could be like, Ugh, I haven't done great this year. I need to reset. So um, I know for me, uh, reading can be a challenge. Um, I've been through a season that God has allowed, and actually I was trying to push out of it and go into a deeper season of a lot of prayer and a lot of reading because that's what I like to do, and that's what I've done for years. But I've had a season of rest, and every time that I tried, God would say no, no. It's okay, you're resting right now. And I kind of know why, because I needed I needed to rest to prepare, you know, to uh, battle. And we want to not wear ourselves out. So this isn't a condemnation thing. This is just, um, you know, we have to remain in his word. So whether you're just sitting down and having your 10 minute devotional, or you're going to go deeper, um, there's lots of different ways. For me, I have to start going deeper again so I'm a busy mom, like I said, a homeschool mom, all this crazy stuff that's basically a full-time job, plus everything else that moms have to do. So I'm going to do Audible. I'm not a great reader. It's hilarious because I'm a writer, but I am not a great reader. And I have a little bit of ADD, so when I'm reading, I have read like a whole chapter. <laughs> and then I'm like, uh, my brain went over here. I was thinking about laundry or whatever. I don't even remember what I just read, and I have to go back to it. And, um, but when I listen, I hear. So I have a bunch of unforsaken um, ones that I have missed and I have looked at all the titles and I'm so excited to listen to those. You ladies have really given some great messages on here. Um, some of Mo's events I've missed, so I'm gonna go back and listen to that. Um, the Bible app, I just, you know, get myself ready with some plans and then you can hit it to read it to you so you don't have to read it yourself. It'll be in your ear. There's different ways to do it. So we're going to remain in him by being in his word because his word is the truth. His word is God's actual voice on paper that never changes. Same yesterday, today, and forever. So those are his promises. And we want to just keep renewing our mind, renewing our mind, renewing our mind outside of what the world says or other people say to us or about us, we will claim that word over ourselves. Claim that word over your life, over your job, over your marriage, over your children, over your business, over your ministry, whatever it is, his promises are for all of us, y'all, not just for some. And, oh, well, she's this, so she's really going to get God's blessings, and I'm just here. No, we are the body of Christ. And it's really important. God really wants us to get this in our heads. I really think that we've gone away from some of the unity and we've gotten pretty prideful in some of our, uh, I'm just putting it out there, that's coming from the Holy Spirit. Uh, we've gotten pretty prideful in our walks with the Lord and our talents and our gifts. And it's a shame that we can actually be in the church and compare ourselves 
to others like in the prideful way where we're like, yeah, well, she's over there. She's not going to be in our group. You know, there's that stuff. That stuff goes on. Let's just be honest. It's been going on forever. And um, that's not okay. So um, what is okay is that we understand that we're the body of Christ. And I have a little sticker. I didn't bring my old Bible in here, but I have this little sticker from the Crossing Church when I used to go to the Crossing in Brandon, Florida. Loved that church. Pastor Greg is amazing. And he did a sermon series on being the body of Christ one time I remember and we all had to grab a sticker and I have this sticker that says I'm a left hand I have no idea what that even means it just says left hand so everybody just grabbed a sticker and I've kept it in there I've just stuck it in my Bible so every once in a while when I'm flipping through I'll see it and when I'm feeling less important or when I'm having a season of rest like I've had this year and I see other people like growing out or whatever. We can tend to compare ourselves. God will remind me it doesn't matter. I haven't walked away. It's not like I'm a non-believer. I haven't walked away. I'm not being in disobedience. I'm actually in full-on obedience. Um, I'm important. And you're important. We're all important. We all have a part. Some of us have silent parts. Where we'll never be really seen or heard, but you move the kingdom more because you're praying or doing or serving behind the scenes where you're making all that stuff come together where that push can happen. That takes every person. It takes every person, you guys. It takes every believer for God's work to happen. Okay, so a Sunday morning doesn't happen just because the pastor showed up at church. It happens because there's greeters at the door. There's somebody who decided to clean the toilet the night before. Um, somebody preparing the coffee. Maybe just somebody <coughs> who obeyed and was praying while they were putting their makeup on or they were on their knees all week long praying at home. Nobody ever knows. And we don't have to tell, right? We just do because God wants us to do so um that was a total sidebar and that just came from the Holy Spirit so I apologize for that but um well, I'm not going to apologize but that was for somebody he wanted somebody to hear that so whatever your season is it's okay we're going through those seasons so we're going to pray and we're going to claim his word over our lives and his promises we're going to talk to him and pour out our hearts and souls um, because we're remaining in him with the word and then we go to prayer. So when we pray, we're now we have the knowledge, right? Because it says, ask and you shall receive. And we also get knowledge from, you have to research something. You have to learn how to do your job. You can't just go out and be a nurse. You have to go to school. You have to learn a lot of things. We read God's word. So we get the wisdom. We get the knowledge. We put it in here. And then now we can remember when we're sitting there having a bad day or when somebody's talking to us about something, we can be like, oh yeah, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understandings, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I don't have a ton of scriptures memorized, by the way, where I know the address, but I know a lot of scriptures where I can just start saying stuff that I know the word says, but I don't know where it is necessarily. We don't all have that gift. Um, I've tried. And I write them down. Um, but God loves us to talk to him. So when we pray, we thank him. We claim the scriptures over us, our families, our situations. And then we just want to just spend time reverencing the Lord, just worshiping him. I promise you, it can seem so weird at first because we're so used to just going in with our prayer requests. And it is... You know, we thank them for our home and our cars and gas to get where we got to go and, and food and clean water to drink and beds to sleep in, blankets to cover us up, clothes to wear, hats when it's cold, shoes on our feet, air conditioning and heat. There are so many things to be grateful for. But sometimes we forget to thank God for who he is. Thank you, Jehovah Jireh. Learning who he is, that he's the beginning, he's the end, he's the creator, he's so loving. And when we just praise and worship him in all of his glory, and to be honest with you, 
the best way for me to do that is um, praise and worship music. Like a lot of times I just, it's hard for me to get in that. I got to have the music on and those songs, you know, Jaira, you are enough. Jaira, you are enough. In every circumstance, I will be content. It, it remind those words are scripture. They're words. The people's talent that has for writing songs and singing music have taken his words and applied it to the music. So you are getting God's word when you're listening to Christian music. And he is enough. I will be content in every circumstance. Lord, right now my life is hard, but I'm gonna be content. I'm gonna trust you. You know, just is a good place to get so we can remain in him. We pray right? And God will speak to you, right? He will speak to you. If you just get alone and you get quiet, he will start to speak to you. We're disciples and we have to remember that disciples are hated, right? But remember, Jesus was hated first. So before we start feeling sorry for ourselves, we have to remember that Jesus was hated first. And sometimes that's just a wonderful thing to go into reality of, um, oh, Okay, um, yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you that um, that you were hated first. You were, you were crucified, like what am I complaining about? Okay, this is another thing that the Lord's been putting on my heart. And uh, just as Americans, we are so spoiled and our worst day is so much better than many people's best days um, in other parts of the country. And we have really got to understand that and um, I, you know, I, I am thankful to be an American. I am I'm thankful for so many things. There's so many things going on and they're all God's children. And um, we have to love and not fight, right? So we can just get in that place and remember, okay, Lord, it's okay. And I have a new mindset. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do this. I've said it before. And sometimes I do it and sometimes I struggle. So I'm going to share this with you is if I get any opposition, you know, from like advertising Jesus or saying Merry Christmas. I did that everywhere I went. And some people, most people would say Merry Christmas back. Some would say Happy Holidays. I really didn't experience anybody getting mad at me this year, but that's happened in the past. But, you know, you try to witness and somebody doesn't want to hear it or whatever. Something happens. That exact moment, I want you to do yourself a favor and remember the only reason why you're experiencing opposition is because you're in position. Position, being in position, brings opposition. Write that down. Position brings opposition, okay? Thank you, Satan, for reminding me that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Thank you that I am doing for reminding me that I am doing God's work. You wouldn't be so upset if I wasn't doing the right thing. I'm not sitting here cozy like I have other times. I've let you win and I've just sat in my couch and my chair and just thought about myself and just focused on my problems and not anybody else because nobody has it as bad as me or whatever we might go through with our little pity parties that we have sometimes. No, we're going to get out there. We're going to love like Jesus. We're going to love people. Time is running out. We're going to advance the kingdom of God. And we are going to just praise, right? When we go through the trials and tribulations, we're going to praise when we get the opposition. Because then we're like, yes, I'm doing something right. Okay? Um, and be excited about that. Consider it pure joy, right? That's what um, James 1, 2 says. I'm going to read that to you real quick. This one I have on my phone. <clears throat> okay. Starting with James 1 verse 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Huh? Yeah. Consider it pure joy. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Who wants to not lack anything? If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. Isn't that nice? 
God doesn't find fault. People find fault. The church finds fault in you. Non-Christians, you know, so don't let that be your excuse to go away from the church. The church is just full of hurt people too. So we have this expectation that all the Christians are going to treat us correctly. And we don't. We hurt each other and we do things because we're human beings. But God does not find fault. People will find faults with you and we're human. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Think about a hurricane. Think about that last hurricane that came through and a boat that might have just been sitting out there. There are boats all over the place, still just sitting in random places. And it's so sad and so devastating to think about the things that happen. But if you just think about that, especially if you were there or if you've been in a hurricane or a really strong storm where you felt the wind, when you think about that and you think, man, just my doubting will cause that. Lord, thank you for revealing that to me because now I understand my attitude, my vision, my incorrect lenses that I'm wearing, um, the way I'm handling things. My posture is incorrect because I have doubt. And when we have doubt, we're tossed around. It doesn't feel good, right? You don't have that peace that surpasses all understanding. So if you jump down to verse 12, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. There are promises all over the word. He promises the crown of life. That's the goal. So when you're working out, it doesn't feel good, right? You're working out and you're like, oh yeah, I've got to get in shape. I'm 51. Everything's starting to fall and sag. and I got weird stuff going on when I look in the mirror. So the cold weather I like because I can really cover it up. But <laughs> I have to do something and I know I'm not going to like it. I don't enjoy that. I like to walk. I like to do some things. But I'm not a workout person at all. So, but if I want something... I, and if I want to feel better and I want to look better, then I've got to do it. And I've got to keep pushing, thinking about the end goal. When you have a baby, nobody wants to go through labor. That is not something that we're like, oh, yay, I get to go through labor and, you know, dilate. And when you think about, like, the whole process of what that actually is, it's like, ugh, you know, no. But we do it and we push because we know that beautiful baby's coming out the other side of it. And as soon as it's there, we forget all about it. Right? So we're going to push through for God because we want the crown, but we want everybody else to have the crown. So those people that get on your nerves or that you're a little disappointed in, you want them to have the crown. Not just non-believers, you guys. I really feel strongly that we need to love like Jesus to our believers. Sometimes it's easier to go out and love on strangers and people that you're trying to win to Christ. Let's just be honest. Somebody in your church might be going through something and you're like, oh, they're going through it again and again and again and again. And trust me, I know because I've been there and it's hard. It can be annoying. And, but the prayer that I've shared with women for a wife's prayer, a prayer that God gave me years ago that I have now started praying over my children or anyone else in my life that might be getting on my nerves a little bit, I think, okay, I don't want the devil to win. You've put somebody in my life for a reason. You're the pruner, right? He's the vine. We're the branches. He does the pruning. So we have to let him lead all that, the pruning. Sometimes people will be pruned from our life for a season and sometimes forever. Um, but the prayer was and still is, Lord, help me to... And then you just put the name in. But mine was over my husband. Lord, help me to love my husband the way that you designed me to. Help me to see him through your eyes and not my own. And I pray for the truth to be revealed so the truth can set him free. Well, then I realized I need to pray that over myself. 
I need to love myself, right? We can't love others until we love ourselves. So we have to get rid of some of that, you know, junk and let him refine us um, in the refiner's fire to just work on us. But we can still love others while we're being refined because we're going to be refined till Jesus comes back. Okay, because the only perfect one is Jesus. So it's eh, we're a work in progress, but as long as we're allowing that. So we can push through these battles and claim his victory in our life to receive that crown, a good life filled with joy in the middle of tough circumstances. And I've experienced this personally. Um, well, Mo knows this. She knows some of the things, and some of my friends know some of the things that I've gone through in life. And <clears throat> it's amazing when you can watch somebody go through something and you're thinking, my gosh, they are still have a smile on their face. They're still, you know, <clears throat> going forward, excuse me. But we can. Why? Because God's promises are for me. I'm a daughter of the Most High King. I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. He rejoices over me with singing. He has a plan for my life. I can trust him because I know that he is good. I know that he is faithful. I know that he is, oh, what a friend I have in Jesus. Um, no matter what happens in my life or what people do to us or just life that happens, I know I'm under his covering. It's like an umbrella. I heard a sermon on that years ago, and this is a sad, this is a rabbit trail as well. I'm sorry, I do that a lot. But he literally had an umbrella and said, when you're living under the covering of God, right? Because you're living in obedience. We're remaining in him. We're praying. We're obeying. We're doing what he asks us to do. We get to stay right here. We can walk through the storm all around us. But under this umbrella is me because God is my covering. Well, sometimes we can walk through life and we feel like we're the only one under the umbrella. <laughs> or you might have a group of people under the umbrella. But here's the deal. As long as you stay like that, you know you're under that. So it's like when things come, you can be like, eh, I'm not, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not saying I don't, because I do. But I've learned, I've had to learn and learn and learn and learn to trust God. Like, well, I'm under his covering. I don't know because I can start doing the what ifs and all my anxiety and everything. Just I can't breathe and worrying about the future or whatever might happen. Or worrying about people, you know, people that you love and worrying about them with their troubles that they have or that they're going through or my own. We have to be proactive in those things, right? And just trust and obey. Like Mo says, trust and obey all that's real is today, right? That's it. And we're going to keep pushing. Because God does promise in Romans 8, 28, that God works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. That's you, my friend, and that is me. Three, we have the gift of the Holy Spirit. His works in chapter 16 it talks about his works. He will testify, so we must testify. Well, how does the Holy Spirit testify? Jesus left and said that he was going to send his comforter, right? He was going to send the Holy Spirit for us. So that's been deposited in each and every one of us. And so the only way that I'm talking today on here, especially me in the flesh, would not get on Facebook and talk live um, or be in front of people it, that's the Holy Spirit. So he's working through me and then outwardly through my mouth. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to testify and that's what he's doing. So I've heard many people say that they don't hear the Holy Spirit. And my response to that is, I promise you that he is talking and guiding you. Believe that you can hear. Stop and listen for as long as it takes because he's there. We just have to learn what he sounds like. And he sounds like the Bible, not condemnation, but conviction, no discouragement, but encouragement. 
and you just have to get alone with him in a quiet place open yourself up and ask him to come in talk and help you here and just trust and it's awkward because you have to kind of wait sometimes because you're not used to it so your brain is not shut off but I promise you then it will get to the point where you can literally be talking to somebody, your friend could be talking to you about their situation, you're looking at them straight in the eyes and while you're talking to them, the Holy Spirit is talking to you and you're hearing things come in and so then now you can encourage your friend out of your mouth because all of a sudden she's reaching out for help, she's talking to you but it's not about you, it's not about the Elizabeth Klein, it's about the Holy Spirit that's going on and he knows that you're going to repeat what he says. And so some people have told me they've not heard from God, but then all of a sudden they tell me a story about how they just felt like something told them to go to the neighbors. I'm like, well, what do you think that something is, right? That's the Holy Spirit. Um, something had me do this. Something had me do that. All of a sudden I felt this way. Well, that's the nudging of the Holy Spirit. And as long as it lines up with the word of God, um, loving on people and doing things like that, you know, you can trust it, right? And that's him. And sometimes you'll get it wrong, and that's okay, um, but you'll learn that. If we do all of these things, we'll automatically love like Jesus does, does, and we'll love one another. And it won't go away after Christmas. The greatest gift was given to us, and we can give the greatest gift, which is love. Life is busy, and we can close our eyes because of our own distractions, but there's opportunities all around us to love like Jesus lay down our lives for him. I wrote that down. That was the last thing I wrote yesterday morning. And I had a friend praying for me and she had sent me a message saying, I keep hearing the word surrender. And that was mind blowing because I've been hearing that word too, um, for the new year. And I've been praying that over a situation. So but then I went, oh my gosh, I just wrote down, laid down our lives for him because I read that back in John 15, right? That he calls us friends and he laid down our life for us. Well, if we are to love like Jesus, we literally have to be willing to lay down our lives for other people. And we, most importantly, it's laying down our life for Jesus Christ. We get caught up in our careers, who we are, our identity. I speak on identity so much because I've struggled with identity so much in my life. And we can get caught up in who we are, what we're supposed to be doing, all this thing, you know, and insecurities and stuff. But, you know, even our business that we have, we know that God told Jimmy years ago, years ago when we lived in Michigan, he was reading about Paul, who was a tent maker, but the tents provided a way for him to share about God. And he told Jimmy that he was going to give him a mobile detailing business, and that was to pay for him to be able to share the love of Jesus. And we can get caught up in our business and forget and you want to think about growth and expansion and retirement and, you know, all these things that we have to take care of, taking care of our children. But the other day I was reminded of, it's not about cleaning cars. We do a great job. You know, he does a great job, but thank God. The only reason we do, like, look at Chick-fil-A. They produce an excellent sandwich. But I just recently found out Chick-fil-A originally was made for Christian counseling for the NBA Um Coaches, they can't let their life be out there. People can't know that they're having marriage problems and this and that or whatever's going on in their life. It has to stay very private. So they need professional, you know, counseling and it has to stay private. And, they, and the NBA was originally founded on Christianity. So they're bringing it back. And they gave this guy a great chicken sandwich for us to enjoy. And we just think it's the greatest thing in the world. But Chick-fil-A is only successful because God wants those coaches to get the help that they need. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. So I, you know, and Refinement Auto Detailing has committed to certain ministries. One of them is this, Unforsaken Ministry. So I am just, it has nothing to do with what we're doing. And I'm only saying that because it's like, wow, wake up. 
remain in him, pray, be obedient, praise him for who he is, claim his word over everything, tap into the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. love like Jesus and just trust whatever he wants us to do, we will, because I'm not here for a career, I'm not here for a certain house or car or anything, I'm just, I'm here because God gave me the gift of life and now it's my responsibility to make sure that I share what I have with everybody else. And so if we focus on what's wrong with everybody and what's wrong with the world and everything that's going on, we won't be able to love, right? And I'm preaching to myself right here. I just admitted all that, that all this was, he was just bringing it together and reminding me, Elizabeth, 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 I have a plan, I have a plan. These distractions are happening and it's pulling you away. It's taking you over here. It's you know, boom, 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 boom. And so now I'm just excited because God is going to show us what he's going to do next, right? Because I've been in that place of rest. So I wanted to end with this because this is so beautiful. In chapter 17, we have Jesus prays to be glorified. He prays for his disciples and then he prays for all believers. I'm going to um, let you read some of that on your own, but I'm going to start with the prayer for the disciples <clears throat> because he prayed this over them and then to all, it was so sweet and so intimate. And so he does this for us. I have revealed you to those whom you have gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. He was so excited because I finally got it, right? I've been following them around and they're finally like, oh, now, now, if you read this, you'll see that they actually say, now we get it, Jesus. Because sometimes when he talks in like parables and stuff, it was hard for them to understand. He talked in a way they totally got it and understood. Now that they, oh, now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. Glory has come to him through them. Glory comes to, the, comes to him through us, through you. I will remain in the world no longer but they are still in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world anymore than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, sorry, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth, your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. That's beautiful. Here's the prayer for all believers. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you have given that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. Branches in the vine so that they may be brought to complete unity. That's the thing I was talking about where I was reminded of the left hand. We are in unity. We are one. The body of Christ is one. <clears throat> Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory. The glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. 
Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them, and I will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and that I myself may be in them. That is beautiful. His prayer is that we remain, that we remain in him and he remains in us. So I'll just close in prayer. I'm sorry it went long today, um, but thank you for, um, for that, whoever needed it. Father God, I just, I thank you for your word. I thank you for uh, the revelation that you gave us, Lord, um, to love like Jesus and what that looks like. And to love like Jesus, we have to know how Jesus loved, and that's remaining in your word and remaining connected to Jesus so we can be one. I pray, Lord Jesus, that whoever's listening to this, if they don't feel worthy of your love, that they come and they accept your salvation right now, Lord, because there's not one person that's been created in this world that isn't worthy or that is worthy of your love. None of us are, God. But you love us. They're your son. They're your daughter of the Most High King, and you welcome them. You never return reject anyone, Lord, who is trying to accept you. So if that is you, I just pray for you to just invite God into your heart and just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I accept you into my heart to live. And I just ask that you forgive me of all of my past sins. Lord Jesus, right now I repent of all of my past sins. And I just invite you in to give me a new creation and guide and direct me. I trust, Lord, that you will guide and direct me in my path and move forward in Jesus' name. So if that's you, thank you. Um, <laughs> congratulations on your birthday, your salvation birthday. And uh, Father God, I just continue to pray for everybody else, Lord, for all, if any of your uh, struggling believers, Lord, out there that are just struggling, that they just get in that word, however that is, and that they stay connected to you. And they remember that they're just the branches. We're just the branches. We don't need to take on all this extra stuff and thinking that we need to be the vine or the gardener and we got to do it all. We just got to let you work in us and it's so much easier and we make it so much harder. And Lord, we just ask for opportunities for each and every one of us, Lord, to love like you did. Just love on a neighbor, smile at somebody when we go to the grocery store instead of focusing on our own tasks that we have at hand. But we can look around and, and see those that are in the world um, and just do something, Lord, that you would guide and direct us to do. I just ask that you would whisper that into us, Lord, that they would hear your voice and be able to obey you, trusting that you have nothing but good things set up for us. And even in our trials and tribulations, that we praise you and we thank you for them because they strengthen our faith as we persevere. We love you and we praise you and we thank you, Lord, that we will be the light of Christ through the rest of the year. We thank you for your salvation. Uh, we thank you for coming to the earth as a baby. And we thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for us. We thank you, Jesus, for being our counselor and our comforter. And we just thank you, Lord, as you move forward with Unforsaken Ministries, that you will just reach whoever you want to reach, Lord, nations, communities, whatever it is, God, that you would have. We just ask that you would open up the floodgates of heaven all over it and continue to bless them bountifully, Lord, that as they remain in you and continue to be obedient to you, Lord, that you would just continue to grow and spread the goodness of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Have an awesome day, guys. Thank you. Oops, now I can't figure out how to shut this off. I totally forgot. Oh, here it is.